Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to No Man's Sky. Today we're going to be talking about uh, electricity in general. I got a few logic setups I want to show to you that might be handy for using in your base. I also want to show you a technique on where you can actually use something to have perfect alignment of your uh, solar panels and batteries without glitch building as well. So this is going to be um, logic slash um, alignment guide. I don't know how to call it otherwise, but let's just jump into uh, this straight away. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do some perfect alignment of your solar panels and your batteries. I'm going to take the prefab uh, cuboid room. I'm going to take the glass one because then I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to be placing them on the floor right here. Now, if you have checked my guide about tether glitching, then you know I can also use the tether glitch by just placing a wire here, pull it out, and then just put it back here and place it straight with the floor. Now, if you don't want to use this technique, you can just um, take your uh, cuboid room, you place your wire in the center of the floor like that, and then you look at the bottom of your camera, you can see that the lines on the floor are not uh, aligned with my camera. So I can rotate my camera a little bit so that it lines up and then we move the cursor back to the center and that should be about pretty much centered on the floor and straight. So once I have that, I'm going to toggle back to my cuboid room. I'm going to place it. And then I'm going to place another one here. We're going to place another one here. Now inside the glass cuboid rooms, we're going to be placing our uh, solar panels and our batteries. I'm going to take four uh, I eight solar panels and two four batteries. Um, just a little extra detail if you didn't know that about power. What I like to do is I always build two solar panels and one battery and that is the combination. So if I have eight solar panels, I got four batteries. And why I'm doing that is so that I'm sure that there is always one solar panel that is going to power my battery, charge it, and then the other solar panel is going to be the one that is powering the base. And that way I'm always sure that I have enough power for the battery and for the base, if that makes sense. I do need to make a better guide about this. I had one, I removed it because it was getting outdated, so I need to uh, rework one. So let me remove the glass cuboid room side, and you can see that the solar panels and the batteries are going to stay in position. They will not be removed, but they are perfectly aligned in the position of the previous location. So what I can do now is just power these up and then charge my batteries as well. Then just one line between this and this, and that should be enough. So now this whole thing is powered up and can now serve as my power source. All right, so what I want to show right now is how to save a little bit of power in your base. For example, the, um, the teleporter will be using about 20 power, as you can see there on the top, on your base. So if you have this teleporter on constantly, it will also drain 20 power constantly in your base. If you want to avoid that, you can actually use a proxy switch and I can take the proxy switch right here. And what I'm going to do, by the way, I did glitch this inside the floor. And the reason is because I already got two teleporters right there and I cannot build more teleporters. I can only build one teleporter per base. So I glitched it in. So it is just glitched into the floor. Um, now I'm going to remove the floor for a second here and I'm going to use a short wall below it like that and then we're going to put on that short wall the proxy switch in that corner so i'm going to go to here we're going to take a proxy switch we're going to place that proxy switch right here i can actually rotate it if you want to like that like this and then we're going to take some power from here i'm going to pull it through the floor so it's nicely hidden and then pull it from here to the one side of the proxy switch and then on the other side of the proxy switch we're going to pull that to our teleport like that so now i can put the floor back and if i now go close by to that teleporter it will be activated when i'm coming nearby it and that way it only will be using power when i actually need the base terminus if i do not need it it will deactivate again and that way i'm saving 20 per power uh, as long as I'm not using it. Another way to save power is actually using a night a night and day switch. And I want to show you how you can do that 
but on another location where it actually gets dark. So let me just travel towards that and then we can show you how it works. All right, I have a little bit of a setup prepared right here to show an example how this works. So on the left right here, I got the battery and the power cells, the, the, the battery and the solar panels. These are my power source. This could be your electromagnetic field. This could be your uh, biofuel reactor. Uh, this is the source. This is where you get the power from. And this is now ready to be used in a bit. On top here, I have another solar panel, which is not a power source. This is going to be serving as my switch, as my controller. And then I got my lights here, which is going to be representing the lights of my base. Now, what we need as well is a power inverter. I'm going to place one right here in the middle here, which is going to serve as the control switch, if light or no light. So what I'm going to do, we're going to pull a wire from here to that inverter. And then from this inverter, another power to here, which is going to light up the base. And that's OK, because we are night right now. Now, this switch is going to turn off the light as soon as it gets a control, which is going to be served by the solar panel up here. I'm going to pull a wire from here up to that controller. As you can see, nothing is happening right now. And that is because this um, solar panel is not receiving any power. Now, once the solar panel is going to be receiving power, it is going to power the inverter right here and it's going to disconnect the wire towards the light. And that is going to turn the lights off. And that's another way to provide yourself with a little bit of energy saving if you want to make sure that your batteries don't drain during the day. Now, you can, of course, make this work opposite as well. If you want things to work during the day and not during the night, then you use an auto switch instead. I could just do that as well while we're waiting for the daylight. So if I would do this, let me just place it here. Then we can put a power line from here to the auto switch. And then we do the same here. We pull the wire from the uh, solar panel to the auto switch here. And let's just put another light here. Let's take it uh, red instead. And you can see that if I pull a wire here, it's not going to activate. Now, if we just wait a bit until the day comes, you will see that the power is going to switch this now around where the inverter is turning off your lights during the days and the other switch is going to turn on the lights during the day. So let's see, we are now five o'clock, so we should have some daylight. There we go. We just started. All right. So as you can see right now, the solar panel disconnected the inverter, light went out and also activated the auto switch and then the light went on. So depending on what you want this to do, this is how you can enable or disable your light and save some power. All right, we're back at our original base where we started. I want to talk about the um, floor switch, uh, the pressure plate. Now you would think that because it's a pressure plate, you have to stand on it to activate the light. But it's not really like that. You can see that there is a two switch, uh, two connectors on the back here, which is the power and the output, or power and the output doesn't really matter. So if I stand on it, you will see it activates the light. Now, if you compare it with this switch, you will notice that it's not a pressure plate. But if I go nearby, it is actually a proxy switch, and this is a much shorter proxy switch than the the one that we used for the teleport, because this one activates from a much larger distance, as you can see here. And the proxy switch is right here behind the floor. So we're actually activating it about a floor and a half, I think. There we go. That's about the distance you activate the proxy switch, while this one activates on a much shorter range. So this could be handy for puzzle bases or any other bases you want to have a trap or things like that built into. Um, and uh, one example, for example, one example you can do is, for example, put it under the floor uh, I use the glass floor so you can see what happens. So if I step on it, I'm actually activating this switch. So if I would, for example, delete this floor and then paste the stone floor over it, you can see I can activate this one. Now, the advantage of this is that you, for example, could um, put it in the floor and activate a teleporter that only activates when you're passing through, which allows you to, you know, do some puzzle builds or uh, a trap or something like that. Um, but I think that's it. Uh, these are a few examples on how you can use uh, uh, logic to your advantage and for uh, creative purposes. I hope this guide was helpful. And if you did like the video, then a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. 
I will see you again for another video. I think we slightly are starting to move towards the glitch building soon. So uh, keep an eye out if you want to learn about that. Thank you so much all for watching. Have a great one. Beedle bum out.